Welcome everyone to today's webcast on corporate sourcing of renewable energy in Taiwan. This webcast has been organized by the Global Wind Energy Council or GWEC along with RA100 in partnership with Baker McKenzie and the Global Solar Council. So today's edition on Taiwan is just one part of a larger webcast series on corporates in the global energy transition. Uh, each of these webcasts focuses on the challenges and opportunities for corporate demand of renewable energy. And we focus on the markets here because we see them as high impact markets for renewable energy, which are still in the emerging stage, but where corporate demand could become a high growth driver for additional wind and solar power capacity. So we began the, the webcast series with an edition on India last month. We're following that with Taiwan today, and then we'll have an edition on Japan at the end of this month. And then to end the series, we'll have an edition on Southeast Asian markets and Australia in October. So just a few notes on navigating the Hopin platform. You've made it to the stage, so you're already in the right place. If you would like to visit other areas of the platform, you can do that by navigating on the left-hand side. We'll be holding the webcast and roundtable right here on stage. We'll follow the roundtable with 10 to 15 minutes of small group discussion, which will be held in the expo area in a series of four booths. And then finally, one-on-one -on -one networking will be open for the rest of the time uh, where you can be matched with another attendee in the room um, and have a five minute conversation and then choose to connect from there. At any time, if you have a question for one of our um, roster of experts joining us today, you can share that question into the stage chat box. Um, we're also available for any comments as well as technical issues you might be experiencing. Our team can respond to you very quickly and help you with that. If you'd like to see who else is in the room, you can go to the People tab at the very top right. You can click through to someone's profile and view their social media links, their website link. You can send them a message and you can also invite them to have a video call with you on the platform. And finally, I mentioned small group discussions after the roundtable. So we do encourage all attendees to move from the roundtable to the expo booth. We'll cue you when that's ready. And once you're there, please make a very personal introduction by clicking on that blue button to share your audio and video and, and introducing yourself um, in person, so to speak. So here's our agenda for today's webcast. We're going to start with um, opening remarks from Alexandra Klassen, who is the Senior Impact Manager at RE100. And we're very privileged today to be joined by Dr. Chun of the Bureau of Energy in Taiwan. He'll be speaking about the role of renewables in Taiwan's um, energy transition. And then we have experts from Baker McKenzie on hand. Um, Tiffany Huang, a partner of Baker McKenzie's Taipei office, will be speaking about uh, the market readiness and the supporting regulatory framework for corporate PPAs in Taiwan. And to close off presentations, we have Remy Lee, the Chief Sustainability Officer at TCI, who will speak about the experience, the challenges, and opportunities to procure renewables in Taiwan. Finally, we'll have around 20 minutes for an engaging discussion with all of those experts, moderated by Nate Maynard, who's a research associate at the Chenghua Institution for Economic Research, or CIER, in Taiwan. So with that, I will hand it now to Alexandra for her opening remarks. Thank you for the introduction, Joyce, and hello to everybody who's joining us today for the Taiwan edition of our webcast series. I'm glad to be representing RE100, which is a global initiative led by the Climate Group in partnership with CDP that brings together the world's most influential businesses committed to 100% renewable power. RE100 has grown tremendously in the last few years, and today represents a group of over 250 companies with a total revenue of more than 5.4 trillion and a power demand the size of Australia's. We believe that the transformational power of business demand for renewables can drive change in markets faster, and we're excited to be growing the movement in Asia. Over 40% of the companies who joined RE100 last year were Asia-based. We focus on raising awareness of how corporate renewable sourcing can contribute to companies and countries meeting their climate and energy objectives, and how increased renewables deployment can foster more ambitious climate action across Asia-Pacific. In Taiwan, global warming will increase extreme weather events, which can lead to a loss of mangroves, wetlands, and possibly the largest plain in the country. 
This April, over 140 scientists from Taiwan have called for the government to address the climate emergency with the same urgency and the same vigor that it had done with the managing the coronavirus pandemic. While there's much to be done, Taiwan has picked up the pace on renewable energy, becoming a regional leader in offshore wind. It introduced a feed-in tariff scheme. Uh, it introduced a Taiwan Renewable Energy Certificate Mechanism. And in November, President Tsai publicly endorsed RE100 as a critical consideration for industrial policy. Uh, Taiwan is a really, really important market for us. There are 87 RE100 companies with operations in Taiwan and five with HQs here, the latest company to join being TSMC. I'm um, sure most of you have heard of TSMC before because it's the world's largest semiconductor manufacturer by market cap. But also last month, it assigned the largest corporate PPA in, uh, in history. Later in the webcast, you'll hear more about our work from our regional technical partners here. So now I'd like to hand over the virtual stage to Dr. Chen from the Bureau of Energy at the Ministry of Economic Affairs of Taiwan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. I think that uh, nicely frames why we're doing this webcast series and the potential in Taiwan for corporate procurement to take off. Um, so on the latter point, I'd like to now welcome to the stage, Dr. Chun, who's the director of the Energy Technology Division at the Bureau of Energy within the MOEA or Ministry of Economic Affairs in Taiwan, who can speak about uh, the role of renewable energy in Taiwan's broader energy transition. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to have this presentation, especially in the law of renewable energy in Taiwan's energy policy, uh, transition policies. I'm Chong Xianchen from the uh, Bureau of Energy, Minister, Minister of Economic Affairs, Taiwan. I think my uh, topic will be focused on the energy situation in Taiwan. The second item will be about the energy situation, uh, especially for the transition policy in Taiwan. The third, uh, the third one, the final one, will be uh, about uh, renewable energy development in Taiwan. We have some projects, especially to, to follow the so-called energy transition policies. Uh, first, I want to uh, share some uh, uh, information about the energy situation in Taiwan. Uh, for the Taiwan, we are about 98% of energy uh, consumption are imported. It means that uh, about 47% of oil and the coal is about 30%. Natural gas is about 50% and we have about 70% of nuclear energies. Almost about, uh, I think over the 90% uh, uh, of energy supply are the fossil fuel. And we only have the 2% of the local energies. Means that we have small uh, renewable energies. So it's important that uh, also called, uh, we must increase our local energy into the 7%, like the 20%. For the energy uh, pass, I think the government, why would the government want to uh, uh, announce the so-called energy transition pass in the year of the, uh, 2016? It's based on the four uh, items. First of uh, all, first would be the energy secure, securities. You know that a stable and available and low risk energy is important for Taiwan because 98% of energy are imported. So we must have our own energies. The second issue is social equity. I think the government encourage people uh, to install the solar cell on their uh, rooftop. So it's, it's some kind of we so called a public, uh, public communication uh, policies. One, we encourage people to have the enjoy to participate we so called energy transition. The third one is about the economy, is if the people uh, to install the photovoltaic and uh, offshore energy. This means that the techn uh, technology innovation, the local employment, and the global, uh, green growth is important for the Taiwan. It's good for our economies. The final one will be the envir environmental sustainability. Uh, clean energy is good for our environmental, even for the healthy environment. So it's based on the four top topic. So the government want to promote the energy transition policy in Taiwan. For this slide, show that okay, uh, for the call from the uh, I think the, for the, about the forty-seven want to decrease to the twenty-seven percent. The natural gas will increase to the uh, fifty percent in the year of nineteen uh, twenty twenty-five. The renewable will about ten times. Uh, four times 
from the four uh, percent to the twenty percent. Uh, nuclear, I think, in year of the twenty twenty five, we have the nuclear fuel land. So based on the uh, the, the energy efficiency policy in the year of the twenty twenty five, we have the fifty percent of the natural gas. We have about thirty percent of the coal and twenty percent of the renewable energies. So. I want to uh, share some of uh, the so-called uh, renewable energy uh, development in Taiwan. Uh, I think the, the, uh, based on the, 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 the plan, in the year of 2025, we have the 20, uh, 20 giga of the solar uh, PV. You know that we have the good sunshine, so we said the target about uh, 20 giga in the year of 2025. But as you know now that we have a good uh, wind resource, especially for the offshore energies. So the government said the target about 5.7 in that time. So uh, for this table, you know now that I think the solar energy and the offshore energy will be the flagship uh, uh, project in for Taiwan. In the year of 2025, we have some uh, specific uh, topic to reach for the target. Uh, I think the so the renewable energy want to e increase uh, uh, the 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 five times to the uh, twenty percent of the renewable energies. So I have some uh, so called short uh, conclusion. The renewable energy uh, power generation in the year of twenty twenty five will be about twenty percent. Uh, just I mentioned uh, that the solar PV will be about 10, uh, twenty giga. For the uh, uh, offshore wind energy will be about five point seven. Uh, by the year of uh, 2025. So everyone will concern about uh, our solar uh, project, even for the offshore energy project. I think the option for the offshore wind, uh, wind power will be continued. It's good for our uh, so-called good uh, uh, economy in Taiwan, good for the uh, so-called green uh, uh, car job, and uh, also it's good for our, our energy, energy secu uh, security. I think it's all my presentation. Thank you. Thank you to Dr. Chen for outlining Taiwan's vision for its clean energy transition. And now I'd like to hand it to Tiffany Huang, who is a partner at Baker McKenzie's Taipei office. And she'll be speaking about the regulatory environment and market readiness in Taiwan for corporate PPAs. Hi, good day, everyone. I'm so pleased to have this opportunity to share with you the market readiness at the regulatory environment of corporate PPA in Taiwan. Uh, in this uh, 10 minutes I have, I will walk you through the re regulatory overview and uh, contractual legal framework to the current market and market overlook of the corporate PPA in Taiwan. The uh, 2017 Electricity Act Amendment opened the door to the liberalization of the renewable market and allows the renewable energy producers to sell energy to end users. Before then, all electricity generated by Jenkos can only wholesale to Thai Power, the uh, state-owned vertical integrated utility. This step marks a significant milestone in Taiwan's energy transformation uh, projects. In order to make corporate PPA uh, workable and to promote renewable energy consumptions, the legislature then amended another important uh, law, which is the uh, Renewable Energy Development Law, uh, we call RADA, uh, which is the, uh, uh, the law governs the Taiwan's renewable energy futures. The RADA amendment established the regulatory framework for wheeling of renewable energies across the national grid uh, to the end users while requiring uh, certain large electricity users to increase the renewable energy consumptions. The amendment mainly on two articles, Article uh, 9 and then Article 12. The Article 12 governs the larger uh, electricity users obligation, which I will discuss this uh, later in the, uh, uh, the last section. Now we start with the Thai Power's uh, willing and also the surplus. Thai Power, uh, based on these two laws amendment, swiftly uh, bent its uh, operation rules in June 9, 2019 to make possible the delivery of renewable energies across its grid and to purchase the excess renewable energies uh, when the uh, supply exceeds the customer's load. So let's go to see how this uh, renewable energy direct sale 
works under the current legal framework. As I mentioned that other than corporate PPA, the uh, developers also need to sign two major contracts with Thai Power. One is the wheeling contract, another is a surplus uh, agreement so that the, uh, the project can be feasible and also bankable. Under the wheeling contracts, uh, the RE suppliers can apply and Thai Power has the oblige to, uh, to wheel the service, uh, the, the energy through its grid. Thai Power will then uh, charge the, uh, the supplier a willing fee on a legal ba on a monthly basis. Uh, in addition for the surplus contract, the RE suppliers also can sell to Thai Power. Uh, again, I mean, Thai Power is obliged to purchase this uh, uh, renewable energy is put on the grid when that uh, energy is not being purchased by the end user consumers. Uh, so uh, the, the ener energy developers with these two uh, contracts then makes the uh, corporate PPA uh, feasible. This is a, a simple diagram of the corporate PPA model. So uh, in, the, in the center, you can see a corporate PPA to be signed between the renewable energy suppliers and the corporate buyers. And, uh, and, and the corporate buyers then pay the fees to the, uh, the supplier. Other than this corporate PPA, as we just mentioned that uh, the supplier needs to have a surplus agreement uh, with Thai Power to, uh, to just uh, wholesale the, uh, the, the, the energy exceeding the load. And the most important is uh, the Thai Power will wheel the energy uh, through the national grid to the end user. And from the uh, buyer's side, there is uh, a supply contract with Thai Power as well, so that uh, uh, they give the uh, buyer a, a certain uh, extra uh, energies if uh, the energy uh, consumption is exceeding the contractual uh, capacity of the pop, uh, corporate PPA. Also as a backup due to the uh, uh, renewable energy nature. So this is how the uh, corporate PPA works under the current legal regime. Let's go and to see the current market. Uh, as you may know that uh, Taiwan has uh, set a renewable energy target and will generate 20% of its electricity through renewable energy by 2025. And uh, in order to reach this target, the government uh, mainly uh, have two major promotion plans. One is for offshore wind and the other is for solar. For offshore wind, uh, originally it's a three gigawatt by 2025, but because of the high demand and the uh, high interest of the developers, the government increased uh, uh, the capacity from three gigawatt to 5.5 gigawatt and have been uh, all allocated uh, uh, other than this, uh, it seems to be the, the interest and also the demand is not uh, go away. So the government is going to have another uh, increase, another 10 gigawatt. This is called uh, zone three, uh, phase three is a zone development uh, for 2025, 2026 to 2030, to 2035. So in uh, uh, 10 years next to 2025. Uh, of uh, corporate PPA during this initial uh, stage. Um, under the, uh, the current situation, because Thai Power provides a kind of a FIT is uh, esteemed high uh, or very high compared to the non-renewable uh, Thai Power's rate, which not given a very good incentive or even disincentivize the developer to enter into a PPA. Another uh, worries or concern is uh, corporate uh, off takers will likely to be assessed as a kind of a high risk, credit risk compared to Thai Power. And, uh, and also in this new market and before a track record of bankability is established, there is a risk that the corporate off taker uh, will not find a supplier to take the financing risk of uh, executing the direct agreement with corporate uh, off-takers instead of with Thai Power. So this is a challenge under uh, initial stage uh, from the supplier's perspective. And if we look at the, the challenging from corporate off-takers uh, perspective, that uh, uh, the energy generated by, 
by the supplier may not be uh, as stable as that of uh, Thai power. This is uh, one of the concerns. Another is uh, that uh, because the Thai power offer uh, quite high FIT uh, rates, so op uh, corporate uh, off takers may uh, have to pay a premium in order to get uh, the corporate PPA. Nevertheless, um, current status that uh, uh, the corporate PPA market is still in a high demand. This is because uh, a growing appetite for renewable PPA in Taiwan, uh, driven by the liberalization of uh, Taiwan's renewable market, as we just mentioned, and also the government's uh, ambitious uh, renewable energy agenda. So uh, just according to uh, the public's uh, the information, there are two significant deals that is worthwhile to mention here. That uh, in January uh, 2019, last year, uh, Google has signed a long-term uh, PPA, corporate PPA, to purchase 10 megawatt solar projects. The project is uh, located near Tainan City. Uh, another one is very recently, just last um, uh, month, that uh, uh, TSMC, the uh, Taiwan chip, uh, chip giant, uh, announced uh, together with uh, Austat, the largest uh, wing, uh, offshore wing uh, players, uh, that uh, they have uh, signed a 20-year PPA that Thai Power, uh, sorry, the TSMC will buy uh, 920 megawatt uh, offshore wing uh, uh, energies uh, located in the offshore of the Changhua uh, County, which is the quite a significant deal. And this a TSMC deal marks the, the first and also the largest offshore corporate PPA for Austat. And uh, the previous three uh, Austat PPA are total 154 megawatts. So this is the uh, current status of the corporate PPA. Let's go to see uh, the market uh, outlook. Um, as we just mentioned that uh, there is a uh, a draft uh, regulations on uh, uh, renewable energy obligations for large electricity users. Uh, you can imagine that this uh, regulation, once uh, implemented, the uh, renewable energy market demand will be increased uh, dramatically. So uh, the, the draft is, is almost ready. And uh, currently, I think the, the latest uh, consultation was uh, June, uh, last June, just uh, two months ago. And uh, 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 I think the BOE will, will very soon uh, roll out and then uh, have these uh, regulations uh, uh, put in effect. And based on these uh, uh, regulations that uh, uh, the certain large users, electricity users, have to uh, source a part of their electricity supply from the renewables. And um, now, uh, according to the draft, the, the, the so-called large end users uh, is those who have signed a supply contract with Thai Power that exists a capacity uh, of five megawatt. They are required to have a, a green energy account and to uh, purchase a certain percentage. The draft is 10% of their capacity uh, to be renewable. Uh, there is a five-year time uh, for these large uh, users to satisfy their uh, obligation, this 10% uh, uh, obligations. The BO, according to BOE's draft, BOE is considering to, um, to have to require the big users to complete 50% of their obligation, which is 5% of the contracted uh, capacity within three years. And then... Uh, this uh, uh, to fulfill this 100% uh, of their obligation by the end of this 50 years. And uh, how, how, how it works, that the end users under this uh, regulation needs to satisfy the obligation by four uh, different uh, options. One is, of course, they're going to install a renewable facility outside, on their side for their own use, or they're going to purchase the renewable energies and or certificate. And the third one is to install uh, energy storage equipment on their sites, or they just pay the penalty uh, to make a cash payment as a levy. We just mentioned that the initial stage, the corporate PPA seems not that attractive because uh, the Thai power offers high uh, FIT and also Thai power uh, from the credit 
uh, perspective is strong, uh, kind of a uh, higher uh, ranking higher than uh, any corporate. Uh, however, this situation will not uh, last, and even I think it's, it's getting changed because uh, uh, the uh, the renewable energies market uh, demand is high, and uh, uh, the competition also high. So those uh, coming to uh, either trying to build up a, uh, a solar project or participate in the offshore wind uh, phase three or even uh, future phases uh, competition, they might really get the FIT uh, rate, uh, which has been seen actually in the, in the phase two that uh, the, during the uh, auction uh, stage that uh, the uh, developers offer uh, the auction price much, much lower than uh, FIT price, even lower than thermal uh, price. So we will see the high competition that uh, uh, the, the, the rate uh, they can get may be lower. So makes the corporate PPA kind of a more attractive. Actually, I think some developers use this as a strategic uh, use to get into you know, to participate in the auction and then get the kind of a ticket, uh, get a concession right to, to build the, the offshore wing or the solar, and then uh, uh, can sell uh, the uh, the energy to corporate PPA. So, so we will see that uh, uh, the situation for the corporate PPA uh, in in the coming, I mean, near future, uh, I think the situation will not be like uh, this uh, current uh, initial stage. And um, uh, also basically, I mean, based on the large uh, electricity users' obligations to take uh, renewable energy. So the market, I think, uh, is quite attractive. Uh, currently, there are around uh, more than 500 uh, companies in Taiwan that have met the threshold of 5 megawatts, which may be qualified as a large electricity users. And this is the one incentives. And the other is a, a, a renewal mounted national corporation uh, made a significant commitment to uh, their, uh, uh, to use uh, the renewable, 100% renewable for their business use. So companies like 3M, Facebook, Apple, and also uh, H&M has already made this a significant uh, commitment. Uh, this uh, multiple corporations may extend this commitment to their global supply chains. And as you know that uh, Taiwan has, uh, uh, in any um, aspects, in, in many industries like high tech, like textile, are uh, uh, the supply, within the supply chain of those uh, global uh, companies. So uh, they may like to uh, also uh, meet the requirements in order to uh, maintain as a qualified supplier in this supply chain. So this is the prospect of corporate PPA, uh, pretty promising. Um, my presentation uh, will stop here, and I'm looking forward to have the uh, uh, dialogue with you uh, during the Q&A section. Thank you. Many thanks to the Baker McKenzie team for giving us a solid foundation for our roundtable discussion in just a few minutes. Um, but before that, I would like to welcome to stage Remy Lee, who is the Chief Sustainability Officer at TCI. And he'll be speaking about um, their experience procuring renewables in Taiwan, as well as any challenges and opportunities they foresee in this area. Hi, everyone. Um, this is Remy Lee from TCI, and thank you for joining this panel. Um, let me briefly uh, introduce TCI in the very first. Um, TCI is a new, uh, leading nutraceutical contract manufacturer based in Taiwan. And we have more than 350 clients uh, from 54 countries across the globe. So in terms of OEM and ODM in the industry of supplement and skincare category, um, TCI ranks top three in the world. So TCI is the, the very first Taiwanese company to join the Global Corporate Leadership Initiative, RE100, and TCI has committed to the 100% renewable energies by 2030 and to speed the global low-carbon transition. 
So by using our own self-generated solar plant and purchasing the, um, the rack um, TCI already achieve 38% of renewable energy by 2019. So it's so exceeding our original target, which is to 20% by 2020. And in 2020, TCI also among one of the very first um, six companies to sign the CPPA after the uh, legislation of uh, free trade of green energy from private sectors. So speaking of the, um, the, the, this panel, um, TCI is going to share with our perspective of procuring renewables in Taiwan the challenges and the uh, opportunities. So first, in addition to the requirement from the branding companies and, and with the rise of the uh, environmental awareness, the EIA also tends to require the, uh, the companies to use green energies. So for example, uh, TSMC, which, is, which recently joined R100, their three nano plant was able to pass through the, um, the acceptance from the government in the following condition. They have to use at least 20% renewables and 50% of the re recycled water. And this case reveal a very important message that an, any company wants to get the approval on their major investment project. It is so inevitable to promise to use the green energy to reduce the uh, environmental damage. Um, in April 2019, uh, regulations on the uh, development of renewable energy requiring large uh, electricity users to set up or provide sites to install green power plant, or at least purchase the rack and or they have to pay the fees and I call it the penalties. So in October 2019, the Energy Administration uh, uh, announced that the, um, uh, it would set the threshold of the 5,000 kilowatt as the uh, threshold for a large electricity users and require them to use at least 10% of the renewables. So it is estimated that 600 corporate uh, users in Taiwan will be affected. In addition, Tainan and uh, Taichung government also have regulations requiring large corporate electricity users to comply with the relevant, uh, relevant regulation on the use of green energies. So we estimate that the green energy business opportunity can reach 15 to 20 billion NT dollars, and there's still much more room for growth in the coming future. So despite the huge demand, it is even more difficult you know, for the private sectors to buy the qualified green energy in Taiwan. So the challenges, the challenges are as follows. So in the, in the past, uh, Taiwan only had green power subscription uh, plan and there was no proof, no certificate. So it was like a fake green power. So um, until the amendment of the Electricity Act in 2017 that the Taiwan Renewable Energy Certificate has been recognized and established. And however, compared with the international trend of the free trade in green power, Taiwan's Green Power Certificate adopts the um, integration of the, um, the electricity itself and certificate itself, which means the um, manufacturers, we, like TCI, we must purchase electricity from the private, the private sec, uh, power plants if we do want to obtain the certificate. However, uh, based on the uh, electricity law, you know, by that time, only self-generated and used, such as the, you know, small power generation units, like the school, like community can apply for the certificate for the resale. So in the, in the past 10 years, um, solar installation have increased 
the power, the power generation by 600 times, and the wind power has also increased by about 2.8 times. In the past, the, these certificates can only be used as a proof of carbon reduction for Thai power. And back to um, April 2019, the regulations were finally amended. So the private power plant owner can choose to sell to you know, Thai Power or some other companies indeed like TCI, but there are still many, many difficulties. So from the perspective of the two major sources of green power, uh, solar and wind, it is almost impossible for solar power owner to terminate a contract with the Thai Power because the, the feeding tariff in the early contract were extremely good. So, um, so operator just sign up to sell for um, $8 to even $10 per kilowatt hour and almost no one wanted to cancel the contract. So at present, only landed base wind power is expected to be negotiated with Thai power to terminate the contract. So in the past, the, the FIT of the wind power sales was about uh, 2.1 to 2.2 ND dollars per kilowatt hour. So, and it has, um, you know, downward train year by year. So as long as someone is willing to purchase at the price of three ND dollars, the, own, the owner might consider to resell it. So, um, however, the, uh, the current situation is that the Thai power and the power plane owner couldn't agree on the um, the breakup fees. So um, one hour, uh, it's like one year after the regulation amendment, there was still no successful cases of the uh, the, the contract termination. So the the above are the uh, difficulties and the the challenge, you know, from purchasing of the renewable in Taiwan right now. And uh, speaking of the opportunities, the you know, green power supply chain would definitely affect Taiwan's um, competitiveness. For example, in March 2019, Apple announced uh, a list of top 200 suppliers and 45 out of it are Taiwanese companies. So including semiconductor manufacturing, lens, um, components and packaging materials, so if the electricity, electronics industries can make preparation in advance, it can take advantage of it. So take TCI as an example. And back to 2015, we built up our very first, um, our very first and the very second solar plant on the roof of our two facilities. And back to 2017, we complete the very first USGBC certified lead beauty mass facilities. So while we complete the uh, the beauty mass facility, uh, we also won the bid from our largest B two B client in Europe, which is one of the uh, the brand under the uh, the group of LVMH. So after that, you know the clients, the, the this client just set up their protocol for suppliers based upon TCI's policies in renewable energy procurement and some other energy efficiency plans and some other green policies. So which means um, more and more branding companies uh, or the um, direct sales companies or some of our clients in different channels like TV shopping, like the WeChat channel knows more and more of the client just recognize our concept in procuring renewables and TCI is conducting LCA for the finished product. But those are not going to be uh, considered or even taking into account back to five or six years. So um, I believe once we can achieve new renewable hundreds, um, we believe we can make much, much more impact on the recognition of the climate crisis. And also we can enjoy the growth of our own business. And thank you for your time.
Great. Thank you very much, Remy. At this point, I would like to welcome back to the stage to join Remy, uh, Tiffany Huang, as well as Murray Bowler, who's a senior consultant at the Baker McKenzie office in Taipei, for a 20-minute roundtable discussion, which will be moderated by Nate Maynard, a research associate at Chunghua Institution for Economic Research. So I'll hand it to Nate now with the final note that any questions from the audience are very much welcome for our speakers and can be submitted through the stage chat box. Hi, seems like we're live. My name is Nate Maynard. I'm very excited to be here, <laughs> here with uh, McKenzie and uh, TCI's Remy Lee. Uh, I think before we get started, I just want to thank uh, GWIC uh, and for sponsoring this event. And I think that kind of opportunities to show you I think it's opportunities to there. Where? Can I hear? Power company. Can hear you. Sorry, Nate, we can't hear you. You cannot hear I, me. I, I, it's unclear. Say it again. Sorry. Nate's audio is muffled. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Can you hear me at all? Uh, no, it's fine. Now it's fine? Mm. Is it okay now? That's horrible. Yeah. I just gave like a whole a whole preamble. <laughs> Uh, we're good. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, no problem. Okay, I can hear Tiffany. We can hear me now. This yes. is better. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. You never want that to happen, but here we are. Um, yeah. I'll just say uh, briefly what I just said. Thank you to GWEC for helping to organize everything. And uh, thank you to Baker McKenzie for sponsoring this. Uh, information about renewable energy development in Taiwan is hard to find. I was already learning a lot just listening to your presentations just now. So um, since we lost some time with me just talking into the air, uh, let's just move on to some quick questions. Um, we, we just kind of described in very dry terms the policy development recently in Taiwan. Are you optimistic about the future of renewable energy development in Taiwan? How do you feel that, you know, there's been some some drama over the years about the feed in tariff. There's been some confusion about PPAs and only really, you know, in the past one to two years have we seen PPAs go public. So do you feel that this is the necessary progress that Taiwan's making? How does Taiwan compare to other countries in the region? Just give me your sense about how you feel Taiwan's renewable energy progress has been going. Uh, maybe we can start. Maybe we can start with Murray or Tiffany. Okay, mom, um, thank you, Nate. I'm going to start. I think it's very uh, optimistic. Um, this is also show uh, government's uh, strong ambition and uh, determination to make grip of the, uh, the, the policy, of the energy policy. So you can see from, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Dr. Chen's uh, presentation, it's very ambitious agenda. And if you look back for the past three years, you will see that the government really rolled out, implemented, you know, step by step, uh, not never delay or even ahead of the, uh, the the target. For example, the offshore wind, as I just mentioned, the, the original was uh, by 2025 is three gigawatt. It turns to be 5.5 gigawatt has been released, and then. Uh, uh, yeah, phase three is going to increase another 10 gigawatts. So I'm I'm pretty optimistic, and I think that uh, the government really shown the a real determination to make it. Okay, Remy, how about you? TCI uh, was the first company in Taiwan to commit to RE100. You you know you've had some learning some learnings. How do yeah. you feel? Uh, well, a lot of a lot of a lot of to say and share with you but first but thank for the the government to you know promote the uh, the the green energy and the the green energy policy is, i to myself is uh for me it's like very optimistic about the future 
But you know, since 20, uh, 2018, we uh, get started to uh, you know purchase the IREC, purchase the TREC, and after the amendment of the Renewable Energy Act, um, we are so the private sectors are so allowed to you know to purchase the the green energy, which are all good. But it's still like I mentioned during the uh, my presentation, still a lot of the you know um, hurdles to uh, to overcome. So the first is, um, uh, you know, for the for the medium or you can say the small size like TCI, you know, the market the market cap from TCI uh, is about one point two billion uh, U.S. dollars, which is small, you know, compared with the gigantic TSMC or some other companies. So when we when we you know have the conversation with those, um, you know, the the, the 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 green power sellers you know they all request for the uh you know the, the very uh unfavorable price for the green energies you know directly uh for example uh last december i i got a i, I got a quote from one of the uh, the foreign uh, the form, uh, the foreign uh, developer that they are going to sign the contract in the east coast of Taiwan, and they offer us the uh, the price somewhere between 4.8 to two to uh, 5.2 NT dollars, which is incredible because you know the average electricity price for TCI for all the consumption in 2019, you know the average is 2.69. So in terms of the cost, and although I have the budget, but, you know, uh, you know, the, the company not, are not going to, you know, purchase the, uh, the, the renewable in that kind of price. So, uh, and of course, probably uh, the government is going to, you know, get rid of the, uh, the FIT, probably like gradually, that will help the uh, private sector to, to, you know, get the, uh, the, the, the green energy. Okay, I'm just scanning the audience questions and, and people seem to be asking a question that I have as well. You know, thanks Remy, you're, you're sharing some of your challenges. Maybe could we talk about, you know, what are some of the challenges? Really good news that TSMC signed this very large PPA. What about other companies? Are there opportunities for smaller companies? What are the challenges they face? Um, maybe we can start with you, Tiffany or Murray about, um, what are some of the challenges, you know, when a company wants to negotiate a PPA? I mean, could I do that? Is it, is it you know, is, is it easy to do? Yeah. Well, the, the challenging, okay, uh, start with the uh, obligations because as, as we just uh, introduced the large users obligation for taking the uh, renewable. So very soon that uh, at least uh, more than 500 companies need to take a renewable uh, and for medium size as uh, remy mentioned that uh, it's um if you are in the supply chain you know it's also another kind of uh, uh obligation you need to meet otherwise you may be excluded so so i will see uh there's a demand and there's a market but the challenging remy just mentioned that the, the fid the government offer uh, in the Thai power PPA is, is much higher. So uh, you have to pay otherwise uh, uh, premium, otherwise you can match in that. Mm -hmm. So, but I, because uh, the offshore wing uh, have an uh, auction price, which is lower than uh, average thermal. So I would say uh, the price may be, the trend is going down. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a good news. And uh, Murray, you may have some supplement. Sure. I, I mean, the comment that I would add is that it's still early days um, uh, in in the development uh, of the market, both for renewable energy and, and for corporate PPAs. So most of the um, uh, PPA deals done so far are, are not solely done for price reasons. They're done for other reasons because yes. the customers have a vested interest in, um, in securing green energy. Uh, for the future. So price may have been less of a factor, um, but Nate, you mentioned um, small users, where do they fit into this? Um, they, we don't expect that they'll be that interested at, at this stage because price mm -hmm. is a greater uh, factor to them. Uh, but give it some time as the market further develops, 
um, price comes down, uh, we'd expect to see a lot more interest from small users. Okay, that's good to keep in mind. So small users maybe need to wait a little bit. Maybe by 2025, things will be easier. Um, Remy, we have a question for you. Uh, you know, based on your your experience for buying utilities and TCI, what what was the biggest obstacle for TCI to overcome with with buying renewable energy? Oh well, uh, first of all, I would love to share with you that um, we 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 bought we purchased the REC, the IREC and TREC, and we also purchased the the renewable energy directly from the uh, the the private sectors. So first. Uh, the REC, the T-REC in Taiwan are, are rare or it's hard to purchase. Although on the platform, on the, on the T-REC platform, you can find a lot, but for those, but for those hold those REC, they are not going to sell like TFDSMC, like Thai Power, they are not going to sell. So uh, every single year we can only bought like 70 or 80, 80 and the price is pretty horrible. You know, some of them are more than twenty-two hundred NT dollars. So my boss is going to kill me. And the second for the um, for the renewables, like I mentioned, um, you know, the, the seller requesting for the long-term contract. This is the first, and they request us to you know to to buy a, a lot amount of the capacity, like eighty mega megawatt, eighty megawatts. So it's like four times, you know, larger than what PCI needs every single year. So I'm wondering if there is any like the uh in the coming future, is there any like platform that that has the uh like the, the risk participation, you know, we can bring the group of people, group of the private sectors to, you know, to buy the uh, renewables, that to allocate the risk you know, from the sellers, something like that. Otherwise, you know, um, our market cap is already uh, sometimes hitting to more than 2 billion US dollars, but, you know, those uh, sellers are still not in favor of TCI and requesting for the higher price for renewables. So uh, for TCI for these two years, uh, I, I can't even, even imagine that we can buy the renewables, you know, within 3.5 NT dollars. So challenges exist yeah. for uh, companies. <laughs> um, let's. Uh, we're getting some questions about large power users. Uh, Tiffany, you mentioned that in your presentation, the the requirements for large power users. I, I read in the news that that was changed. Originally, it was going to be more aggressive, and now it's it's slightly weaker. You know what what is the impl What are the implications of this law? And especially, they're still negotiating it, but you know. What's what's kind of the difference between these different thresholds and and how can companies meet these requirements? Right. Um, they have some consultations and then uh, some questions or suggestion raised, of course. But I think the threshold starting from a proposed BOE proposed is five megawatt has remained unchanged. So currently it's still five uh, megawatt as a, a contract sheet capacity is the threshold. And uh, but regarding the different uh, renewable calculation, you know, the, me the, the five megawatt is for installed capacity. It's not a, it's not a uh, uh, quantum, the, uh, the electricity volume that has been taken. So originally BOE proposed uh, 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 25,000, oh, sorry, 200, uh, 2,000, 2,500 flat for all kinds of renewable. And it's not, it's not a, a right uh, equity uh, kind of a basis because a different uh, a sources has a different technology or their nature. For example, solar will be different from offshore, right? So now they are calculated. I think it's, uh, yeah, for example, it's a uh, uh, hundred, it's a 12, 1250 for solar and then the 2500 for yeah for a 200 fund uh, for 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 solar and then the 300 30 is 3000 
seven fifty for uh, for offshore. So so I think it's more it's become more um, uh, accurate for different uh, kind of uh, uh, solar uh, resources. And another is the five year kind of uh, a five year term to fulfill the hundred percent of the uh, of the obligation, the ten percent obligation. The uh, bill is, is just treated slightly, trying to meet all the requirements or make it more uh, kind of a, a reasonable. So those, those are small minor changes. I mean, the, the major trends uh, on the principle still unchanged. Okay, that's, uh, that's good to know. Um, so you want, so companies now have to meet these challenges. Other companies are meeting these challenges because of you know greener supply chains. When you're, let's say you want to negotiate a PPA, what do you want to look for? I mean, what would you recommend to your clients? You know, Tiffany or Murray, and then Remy, what what do you have in mind when you're when you negotiated your PPA? Um, whoever wants to start can can start. Maybe if I if I'll go yeah. for, for this time. So, so, so Nate, we primarily act for the developers of these projects. Okay. So what we like to see in a PPA uh, is a contract that extends for the, for the life of the project, or at the very least for the same 20-year uh, term of PPA, which we would have got with, uh, with Taipa. Uh, so that's, that's one factor. We also like to lock in uh, the fees and tariff for that 20-year period, just the same as we would get. Uh, under the Thai Power PPA, um, we want the contract to be to be stable um, and to be able to continue in effect. So it shouldn't be able to be terminated, uh, uh, you know, for any uh, for, for, for convenience or without a uh, good good reason. Um, and we also look to see that there's uh, good payment terms, so mm -hmm. that payment for the electricity will be made on a uh, on on a timely uh, basis. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes credit support will also be required uh, because the obligation being assumed by the customer for a, a long term, like 20 years, is quite a, a, a large obligation. Um, and the developers will be relying on that customer and that PPA uh, as a source of revenue to proceed to project finance uh, construction of the project. Um, so credit support will sometimes be required. Uh, th those are just the key key things we look for. Remy, any thoughts about what you need to know before you sign a PPA? Is there anything you wish you knew before TCI signed a PPA? Well, uh, because we only signed one PPA before on on April, and the terms and condition are are simple because the contract only lasts for like two years. And you can, of course, extend the, uh, you can you renew it and renegotiate the, the, the price. So uh, since the price is high enough right now, so um, we still consider to build up our own, you know, our own uh, facility, our own, uh, our own facility. So um, now, since we do have the, uh, you know, more than 600 uh, hectares land in the East Coast, so we are considering if we can, you know, Build up the uh, the solar plant on the fish farm on the fish farm. So this is probably another solution because uh, we already made the uh, the research and do the calculation from the, from one of the third party that it proves that uh, if we build up our own facilities and um, you know the the price for the electricity and um, you know for self self sufficiency is pretty much close to that we sell to Thai Power, not so, it's very close, it's very close. So um, if we don't have, uh, if we cannot have a very favor favorable terms on the uh, CPPA, then uh, we're gonna find, you know, some way out. Okay, uh, I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Uh, I'm seeing a couple different questions, but they seem to relate to cost and sort of the competitive pricing. You know, how do things like the feed-in tariff, how do things like localized content uh, end up influencing the price of the PPA and ultimately the price of renewable energy? Uh, maybe, maybe Tiffany, do you want to take that one or, or Murray? Sure. Um, the cost 
Right. Uh, you know, the BOE every year announce the formula for renewable energy. Mm -hmm. That is uh, the price for FID for the uh, type power PPA. I think it's always a benchmark uh, for, for the corporate PPA. And so, as Remy mentioned, that uh, if 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 a corporate PPA has no incentive, you know, the uh, the developer rather than sell to Thai Power, so that's a challenge. Is that we always compare with uh, Thai Power's PPA uh, uh, and, and mm. because the competition is high, and so we will see the uh, FIT price. The trend is going up. So I think that's also kind of a, a good sign for a corporate PPA being uh, taken. Uh, any other things that you want to add? Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I guess I'd just like to add to that too, just to, just to remind everyone that the purpose of a feed-in tariff, it's intentionally higher than what the ultimate market rate will be in due course, because mm -hmm. it's intended to encourage developers to do new and potentially risky things like develop offshore wind uh, projects in, in Taiwan. But one, once uh, developers have figured out how to uh, deliver those projects in Taiwan, how to uh, address the risks um, and uh, supply chains uh, are built up, then of course there's much less need for a, a high feed in tariff uh, to encourage development. And then it can, uh, you know, the cost of electricity can revert uh, back to more of a, a market rate. So again, I, it's just reflective of the stage of Taiwan's renewable energy uh, development. So, uh, I mean, R Remy made the made an interesting point that uh, you know he may well be able to um, you know develop a project uh, himself, which could deliver uh, electricity at a cheaper price. And of course, he can. But then he's got to take on this investment project and construction project of actually uh, building it um and uh fund fund it and, and finance it mm -hmm. and accept all the risks associated with, with doing so um those risks are of course uh covered to some extent by by the fees and tariff um that uh that uh that's being paid okay great i see that joyce is back yes thank you i i just wanted to jump in here because uh conscious of time we're running a, a little bit over for the round table but um, I think it's it's been a really lively and engaging discussion. So my thanks to Nate for his excellent moderation. I'm glad we sorted your audio issues as well. Um, thank you to Tiffany Murray for joining us from Baker McKenzie, as well as Remy joining from TCI. Uh, thank you to Dr. Chun from the BOE, and and thank you to Alex Klassen from RE100. Um, the good news is this conversation does not have to end here because we uh, still have many, many questions that we haven't gotten to yet. So um, what we can do is we'll close down this portion of the webcast and we've actually opened up our expo booths where our Baker McKenzie experts, our uh, CIER experts, our RE100 experts, some folks from GWEC, and we also have um, someone, Shailesh Chalang, joining from PDP who can answer any questions about technical verification of renewable energy credits. Um, globally on an international level, so especially for those buyers which might have a footprint outside of Taiwan, maybe a regional footprint, um, there's a CDP booth open as well. So we'll have a small group discussions for the next 10 minutes or so, and then around um, quarter to the hour, we'll start to wind those down. Um, until 5.30, after our small group discussions, we're going to keep the platform open and you can engage in one-on-one -on -one networking at your own leisure just by using the, the networking function on the left and you'll get a randomized match to another attendee uh, for a five-minute conversation and you'll be able to connect with them through the platform. So um, we're going to end it here and we'll encourage everyone to move over now to the expo area and pick a booth for a small group discussion, share your video and audio. We want to hear from you and, and see you and get a personal introduction face to face. Um, and one last uh, thank you to all of our speakers um, for joining us today and, and all of our partners for this webcast as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And we'll see you at the expo.